Hello to all students. In this video lecture, we are going to discuss mechanism of bird's flight. There are two types of flight found in birds, active flight and passive flight. During active flight, birds flaps their wings and use their body's energy, which is used to fly in the air. While in passive flights, wind currents are used to fly in the air. Flying in the air and to stay airborne is very difficult than swimming in water or walking on a land because gravity is pulling the birds toward their center. But birds overcome this force of gravity and fly away from the earth's gravity. For this purpose, they need a lot of energy which they uh, obtained from high energy foods like seeds of the plants. So we are going to discuss uh, different types of flights with their mechanism uh, along with diagram. So first of all I have uh, arranged a list of key points which we are going to discuss one by one. First of all the wings of birds acts like an airfoil. Airfoil is a, a thin surface like a leaf of a book which can fly in the air easily just like the wings of an aeroplane. So the wings of birds are modified in the form of aerofoil which helps them to fly in the air more easily. Secondly. Their body is streamlined. Birds have pointed bodies from the anterior end and the posterior end, which helps them to reduce the friction produced by the air. They also have covering of feathers on their body, which also helps to reduce the friction of the air. Next point, anterior margin of the wing is thicker than the posterior one. So if we look at the cross section of a wing. If you look at in this diagram, this purple shape is a shape of a wing. This is the anterior end of the wing and this is the posterior end of the wing. The anterior end of the wing is always thicker while the posterior margin of the wing is thinner. So this shape helps to fly in the air. Next point is upper surface of wing is convex. If you look at the shape of my hand, the wing is curved. The upper surface is convex while the lower surface is concave. This has a key role in producing a air pressure. How? Let's look at this diagram. So this diagram, this is a wing. And this is the upper surface of the wing which is convex and this is the lower surface of the wing which is concave. When bird fly in the air, the air coming from the anterior part of the body is going to pass over this convex surface more faster and farther than the lower surface. In the lower surface because they, that is concave air moves into this concave curve which reduces the speed of the air. So if we look at the next point, air passing over the wing travel faster and farther while air passing through the concave surface moves slower. As a result of pressure on the upper surface of the wing reduces and pressure on the lower surface of the wing increases which gives a lift to the bird. This lift is against the force of gravity, which helps the birds to move away from the gravity of the earth. So if we look at the next point, upper surface of wing has lower pressure because air is passing more faster and while the lower surface has more pressure. So what will happen? Lift is created as a result of this pressure gradient which should overcome weight and this lift should always overcome the weight of the bird. If this lift is 
smaller than the weight of the bird the bird can uh, is unable to fly or unable to lift in the air so this is a very important point that the force created by this wings should be greater than the weight of the body now when a bird flies in the air it has it has two important tasks number 1 to overcome the force of gravity and overcome the friction which is known as drag force so the gravity of the earth is overcome by lift which is created by wings while these wings also produce a kind of thrust which is going to overcome the drag force to move the bird in a forward direction so what will happen the force of the bird's wings that propel forward the bird must overcome drag in case if the bird wants to move forward it has to overcome the force of friction or fo drag force now we are going to talk about angle of attack if you look at this diagram this is a wing and this is the this line is the body of the bird there is a very small angle between wing and the body this angle is known as angle of attack this is the direction of wing motion and air is passing over the wing and under the wing but when birds wants to fly take off hovering it has to increase the angle of attack now look at this diagram the distance from the, the the distance of the wing from the body has increased angle has been increased which is known as angle of attack when angle of attack increases there is more lift and there is more thrust which helps birds to fly against the gravity and in the forward direction but as air moves more faster and farther over the wings and more slower under the wings but this increase of angle of attack causes turbulence which is a kind of shaking bird must have to overcome this turbulence to stay airborne for this purpose a wings has a small group of feathers which is known as allula attached to the feather what is allula allula is a group of small feathers which are supported by bones of medial digits and this allula is raised during turbulence which helps to reduce the turbulence and uh, increase the lift of the bird so the angle of attack when increases during take off landing and hovering flight allula is elevated now we are going to discuss this in more detail in my points so increase of angle of attack increases lift but increase in the angle of attack causes turbulence and the turbulence reduces lift to reduce the turbulence wings have slottings slotting in the wings and allula reduces turbulence. first of all allula is raised and secondly the wings have slots like the gaps between their feathers which helps to move air away and helps in the reduction of the turbulence now the wing has two parts the part which is closer to the body is known as uh, proximal wing while the part which is away from the body is known as distal wing distal wing is very important because it produces active flight by flapping in in two modes there are uh wings feathers which are attached with the distal part of the wings they have like a two cycles and uh, the in the first cycle the bird's wing pushes the air downward and air in the which is called as active stroke while there is a recovery stroke in which bird's wings moves upward direction when the distal part of the wing moves downwards the feathers of the wing are overlap with each other and there is no slotting but during the passive stroke to reduce the friction 
uh, overlapping has been reduced and these are there are slottings in the wings which reduces the friction so in this way active stroke and passive stroke of the distal part of the wing helps in the flapping of the wings which cause active flight so the distal part of the wing generate propulsive force which gives lift to the bird and also helps the bird to move in the forward direction propels the bird in the forward direction there are also tail wings tail feathers tail helps in the balancing of birds during flight and also help in the steering moving forward on the right side on the left side animal can steer itself with help of tail and also during landing it helps to stop the bird which is known as breaking so there are different types of birds which use different types of flight modes during their life period some birds they do active flight some birds they do passive flight which is like gliding so i have taken some examples like gliding which is done by waterfowl or seagulls these birds use passive flight and helps uh, use water currents uh, to move inside the or to stay airborne second type of flight is known as soaring which is done by hawks and vultures these are also types of this is also a type of uh, uh, passive flight in which what uh, wind currents are used to move up and down in the air hovering is a flight which is done by humming birds in this in this condition humming birds which are smallest bird in our universe they use their wings they flap their wings 80 times 50 to 80 times per second to remain airborne while sucking the nectar of the flowers in the form of eight shape and they can hold still their body in the air with this type of movement so i hope it makes sense and uh, we'll see you in the next lecture until then bye